Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So um, we're going to be taking the little teaching. You can have your seat. Hallelujah. Yes, I love you too. Thank you. Hallelujah. How to sustain attraction in relationship and marriage. Yeah. How to sustain attraction in relationship or marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So um, some persons wonder why they got, they're attractive or they got attracted. I mean, there are some guys that when you ask them why did you get into a relationship with the person? Why did you marry? Say because the person had pink lips or the lady had hips and butts, front and back, like my husband's case with me, but I didn't have front and back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, and then you wonder, you know, well, but probably the person was intelligent. Everybody has what they're attracted to. That's the truth. You know, what is, what is attractive for you may not be attractive for the other person. Or what got you attracted to the person may not be what to get the other person attracted to. So it's, it's, it differs for everybody, you know. So I remember back in school, there was this girl, one woman graduated, they said she has gotten married. Everybody was like, ah, 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 what happened? How did she get married before me? Mm. You know, there are some ladies like that, they're like, ah, they're not fine, sure, but <laughs> uh -huh, that kind of thing. But she got married anyways. And, you know, somehow when I kind of got pr privileged to talk with her husband, you know, we realized that man said, I liked her intelligence. Mm. Yeah. So attraction is very broad. Attraction is a prerequisite. That's why it's very important about teaching on this, you know, topic. Attraction is a prerequisite for choosing the right partner and living with the right partner. True. Yeah. You know, many times I know we always talk about pray and all of that, you know, and oh, we need to pray to get the right person. You know, we need to see God. You know, it's very important. That's the truth. You know, but the truth is, if I wasn't attracted to my husband, I may not have married him. Mm. That's the truth. I love his chest, his built. You know. Yeah. Yeah, she loved my legs. Ah, was I seeing your leg? <laughs> but I liked his, you know, it wasn't a six-pack kind of guy, but I liked the way I he looked. I was in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Amen. I'm now six pack. <laughs> <laughs> so then when he's walking, I like the way he bounces. That's what I was saying. Now you like my legs. Okay, it's not your legs, it's your style of walking. Okay. <laughs> so then for me, what did you even like about me? What got you attracted to me? Um, I love your legs as well too. Um, I like your eyes, your oh, nose, my face. your lips. Oh. You know. So what we're basically saying that attraction is very important. That's true. That's what we're just saying. All of it's our grammar. Attraction is very key. That you know, when I was looking at her, it wasn't an angel I was seeing. I was seeing yeah, only. Yeah, a human being only. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he picked something that he, you know, and all of that. So, uh -huh. attraction is very key. But we wonder why people get attracted. Your spouse can get attracted to you. Or a bull can get attracted to his bay. Or a bay can get attracted to his bull. But somehow along the line, lose attraction yeah, for each other. Yeah, you can't sustain it. You can't sustain it. So, attraction, it's sustainable. And that's what we want to deal with yes. today. So... We wrote down a few keys in sustaining attraction. Yeah, how to sustain attraction. Number yes. one, appreciate, appreciate yourself. yourself. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. So, we are saying that love, first of all, starts with you. Before you love somebody, you mm -hmm. must first love yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are looking for people that will love them, but they don't love themselves. Yeah. You know, you only attract what you are. If you don't love you, if you, don't love you, you can't get anybody that will love you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14, message translation, Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14, it says, Oh, yes, you shaped me first inside, then where? Outside. Out. So I'm fine inside and I'm fine outside. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, I God. You are breathtaking. If, I, if I'm not, I, I don't want to give you statistics that is not so accurate. But the truth is that a lot of us, when we get to the mirror, we try to see one deficiency in, our, in, in, in how God created us. You know that you check and you say, ah, my nose is too big. My head is too big. Why am I short? I wish God had made me taller. Look at this pastor now that is preaching. Look at Winlow. See, he's 6'3". I wish I was 6'3". Amen? 
I wish God gave me a husband that would be tall or a wife that would be short. You know, we just wish above that which God has already given to us. So King David here in the scripture was saying that he was marvelously and wonderfully made. Yeah. The truth is that if you truly want the best out of your life, you must say, I love you. Hmm? Do you love yourself more than you love me? Oh, see, they are not sure. <laughs> I love myself more than I love you. I appreciate the gift that God has given to me. But many a times the devil will always come and whisper to you and say, you are not good. You are not beautiful enough. You are too old. You are too young. You can't do this and all those stuff. So many of us, we now suffer from low self-esteem. I remember when I was young, I actually dealt with low self-esteem. I mean, I really dealt with it. They tell me that I was going to get married, I will never believe. Not to talk of getting married to a fine woman. A fine woman. Celebrate me now, Abba. <laughs> so as single I was, I never knew I was going to talk to a lady because every time I look at the mirror, I tell myself, why did my parents give me tribal mark? I went to go and Because he had a full picture of where God was taking me to. He had an idea. And me, I did not have an idea. So you, that weakness that people are laughing you about, God knows that that is your strength. The devil knows that that is your strength. That is your power which God has given to you. True. So it's very important that you appreciate yourself. Yeah, true. And it's very important because if you don't appreciate yourself, you won't attract other people to you. I remember then, you know, just like my husband was sharing his experience, for me, I didn't like the way I was looking. I used to look like a ruler then, mm. you know, years ago, like very straight. Back. Yeah, and I had a very close family friend then, back then. He would say, you are scientific linge linge. <laughs> you know, so very long. And I love, you know, my husband used to even tease me that if breeze blow, you can carry me, you know, and all of that. So, I used to pray every morning, God, if, if, by the time I just wake up, just give me hips and bum bum. You know, so, if I had, if you had the one who's always hustling. You see some ladies, you know, they drop you. You have the side chicks. What's the other, other one? What's the name of my name? Side, side cock. cock. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And if you look at Matthew 22, verse um, 39, Amplified Classic, it says, and in second is like it. It says, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. yourself. The reason why many persons never admire other people because they never first love themselves. True. You can never admire other people until you admire yourself. Self-admiration will always lead you to admire people. Mm. So when you don't admire yourself, you look at yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't even look, you don't have an understanding of love. And you will never know how to love people. The reason why you see some people as counselors, you come, you meet people who have low self-esteem, they suffer from complexity. And by the time we search, God, we don't just dig on the fruits, we look at the roots. Mm. What's bringing this? By the time you talk with these persons, you find, you find out that many years ago, their parents were always calling them names. And they grew like that, hearing voices in their head saying, you are ugly, you are mm. nothing, you are dull, and all of that. And by the time you're clacking them, you realize that they don't appreciate themselves. And when you're talking about love, say, what's love? It's just love exists. Mm. It's not their fault. You know why? They don't love themselves. You can, it is how much of yourself you have loved that you can love your neighbor. That's true. So when you haven't loved yourself enough, you cannot have enough love to love your neighbor. Mm. That's how it works. It's just a natural law. So, so as a single guy, I, I, I dated a girl before I met my wife. So I remember when I was going to meet that girl, and I can tell you the reason why the relationship scattered, because I did not appreciate myself. Mm. I'm telling you. You should I remember when I was going to ask her out. Oh, God of mercy. So what I did was that, I don't know if I have guys like that in, in my shoes here. You know, I wrote all my points in my palm, you know, that I was going to see when I get there. So, I started cramming it, you are the joy of my heart, you are the this, you are that, you are this, you know, because they told me that if you need to catch a girl, you need to woo a girl, you need to throw some rhymes. I'm not good at that. Uchul is very good at that. Amen? <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I, I put everything in my palm, then I went to go and see her. But you know, when I got there, I started sweating. I was sweating profusely. <laughs> I was sweating to the point that the sweat cleaned all my points, all my key points in my hand. So she asked me finally, I said, okay, so why are we here? I said, Anna, Anna, 
I, 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 he said, oh, he said something. I know there's something in your heart. Say it. I said, uh, you, you see, uh, 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 bleh, bleh, bleh. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll come back. And that's how I left. Then finally, I now wrote it on the piece of paper. And I said it to her. In her presence, she was over there. I was clear. And that's how I started one stupid relationship. <laughs> Even in relationship, I did not appreciate myself. I felt I wasn't good enough to be in a relationship. You know, she had a lot of guys around. I, I just felt that those people were better off. I'm not a better yeah. person and all those stuff. I was this very serious Christian on campus, you know, that used to wear multicolor clothes and all. So when I see these other guys on jeans and all, I'm like, oh God, these people are far better. They are more deserving. I didn't know that those negative stuff was the reason why the relationship parted. Mm. So when we parted, I needed to sit down to have a review of my life. And I asked myself, what really is my problem? I realized that I was suffering from low self-esteem. And I need to start learning how to appreciate myself. So I decided to take time to build myself. You know, learn to interact with people. You know, learn to build confidence in myself. And learn to start appreciating myself before I met my wife. And that took me like seven years. So when I met my wife, in short, she knew. It. You know, she said that, I, I, I grew to the point that in my church now, seven years after, they were calling me Minister of Women Affairs. Oh God, I'm good. I'm telling you, I'm good. I became so good. I became, because I loved myself. You don't need to compliment me again. So I don't go sit with a lady or sit with anybody and I feel intimate, intimidated. It's true. So I appreciated myself. I'm telling you, even with those his coats, he was wearing then. Like, he was like... <laughs> Must feel like the most handsome guy then in church. I'm telling you, amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when I went to meet my wife, let's find the fact that she was fine. My wife had traveled out of the country. I've never had that plane in my life. Yeah. I was caught in my pastor's house. Those are enough reasons to kill myself, to kill me. I'm telling you, amen. <laughs> she was already walking. She was an accountant in a firm. I was in my pastor's house and I was squatting in my pastor's house. And I still had boldness. Yeah. Where did it come from? I've learned to appreciate myself. True. And I went to go and meet her. I said, baby, I'm not going to say I ask her because um, I'm selling that key point. Meet me privately. It's 10,000 naira. <laughs> All singles is 10,000 naira. You want to know the key point. I'm, because it took her three days. The words were so powerful that it took her three days for her to give me a yes. <laughs> this is what I have been laboring for for years. Sweating, writing key point in my hand. Build your confidence. Learn to appreciate yourself. It will be easy to uh, um, express that which comes from your heart. True. You must love yourself. True. Always tell yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. This is the best creation God has ever made. Mm. Nobody can turn me down. I mean, he got to that point. I said, ah. then, oh God. As a single person, I said, there is no care we ask out now that will turn me down. That was confidence. So when I, okay, this is the one, okay. You see, Aunt Willie, she's, she's like, a, she's, a, how do you call it? She didn't make young girl away. How do you say it? She has, she has. She has, she has, she has and that time, she'll be for me, you know, in, in church. I said, God has said she's my wife. We go, we move. I said, I cannot disappoint God. Sometimes God has told you that that person is your wife, but you are the one disappointing God. You can't talk. You are looking down at yourself. I went to go and meet her. I said, baby, I want to say it now. Take your binary paper. I said, baby, don't look at my condition. I know you're wondering why I'm squatting in pastor's house. You're wondering why um, I don't have a car. I know there are a lot of guys that have cars and everything that are around you. I know they are telling you words. But you see, bullshit those words. You see me? I love you so much. And I mean it. And I was saying it and I was looking at her eyes. No, I love you so much. And I mean it. No, I love you so much. And I mean it. If you give me a chance for me to be your husband, I will take you around the world. I said, think about these words, okay? So when are you giving me my answer? She said, it, it won't penetrate. He said, so stop, stop. When a lady says stop, stop, it has penetrated. Say stop. 
stop, stop. I said, no, no, no. It's not about stop. And everything. I'm very serious. I want to get married to you in a year time. How can I marry in a year time? No job. I'm squatting my pastor's house. So much, so much confidence and faith. I said, we don't have time. We're getting married. She said, okay, just give me time. Just give me a week. I'm telling you, two days after, she was already calling me. Oh, yes, please. Two days, you reduce the time. Okay, again. three days. <laughs> uh, two, three days, no difference. 24 hours difference. Oh, yes, oh, yes, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? She couldn't sleep. She was thinking about me all through. <laughs> Amen. Then I finally showed up and she was, she was the one that was not shy. I said, say it. Say it. <laughs> say it. Say it. Yes, yes, yes. I say, come hug me. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to build your confidence. Yeah. I mean, you need to build your confidence. You build your confidence by appreciating yourself. yourself. So in all the words, self-confidence is actually more sexy than how you look and what you wear. That's true. Number two. So, so sorry, let me talk to couples here mm. who, who God has given dreams to and vision to. You know, certain times, God can give us dreams and vision as couples, and we do, not, we do not appreciate that which God has given to us. We try to look at other couples or other people who are doing ministry, and we try to rate our ministry based on what they are doing, and we just feel that we are not doing enough. Maybe God has given you a vision or a dream, and you are underrating it. You do not know how powerful that thing is. You know, if God has given you that vision, you must take it with so much with so much love. You must love it. You must protect it. You must blind your eyes from what people are saying and how people see you. I remember when we started the windows 20, 20, 2013, 2013 October. You know, that was when we shot our first skit. So when we shot that skit, we put it up online. So we had already planned our vision that we're going to be acting uh, skits based on relationship and marriage. Everything was set. So we opened our YouTube channel. We put our first video online. So when we put it online, we started calling our family members to come and watch. None refused to watch. None. I called. 24 hours later, we had two views. I made our views was maybe me and my wife. Amen? <laughs> Nobody watched. So I had to force some of my friends. I sent it to them. Not now that data is cheap. You know how that data was gold then. So I forced them to watch it. And these two guys watched the skits. And they called me back. One called me back and said, man, oh, he said, hey! I said, what is it? What do you have to say? He said, man, why you and your wife go just fool on herself? When I just stay as big as on her day, when I just the hard skits, they fool on herself. Ah, ah. When I not get with you, when I want to do it on her life. He said, for me, my advice, stop it. Don't do it. I said, Okay. I called the second one. The second one called me and said, yeah, um, I watch it. It's um, just there, you know. Uh, but my advice for both of you is this. I think you and your wife would be better off behind the camera. You can get people that can be acting so that while you guys are behind the camera. Those were the first two advice we got in our ministry. That was 2013. Ten years after, this is where we are. We are global. <laughs> Listen. What we are saying is this, you must appreciate that vision which God has given to you. Yeah. There are some of you, God has given you ministries. He has given you what it takes to change your world, but you are still comparing it with others. You are listening to what people are saying. You know, it is good that you hold it dear to yourself. Always talk about it in the mirror where you are and say, this is what God has told us to do. We were... We, we, when those people were done, we started shooting skits for one year plus. The highest view we had was 15 views. One year plus. 15. It grew again to 32. We had only one person that would call us back and say, man, you guys are doing well. That guy was uh, our main fan. We didn't care what anybody was saying until God told me to marry you. School, school, school now went viral. And the dynamics changed. Listen, you must appreciate that which God has given to you. You must. Don't talk it down. Don't look at that vision down. Don't, don't throw it behind the corner and say it's not working. And many times when we say it's not working, it's because we are listening too much to what people are saying. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? So celebrate your little goals. Appreciate your mistakes. 
You know, it's very important. Ocholi was telling us from scripture that when the woman that sinned, um, when they brought the woman to Jesus, Jesus said, he who is without sin amongst you, let him cast the first stone at her first. You know, all of us, uh, 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 what, what's this man's name? Uh, Jaguar. I, I can't forget his statement. He said, everybody in a thief, now they cast, not be Barawo. <laughs> so that's what Jesus was saying there. He said, He who is without sin, you know, don't be over righteous that you now talk down on people and make people feel like they are not worthy. Somebody say, I am worthy, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I love myself. Then tell your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, I say, I love myself more than I love you. Let's run. Number two, self-improvement. Remember, we're talking about sustain attraction. Sustaining attraction. How to sustain attraction. Self-improvement. Self-improvement. Now, uh, let me talk to couples. For example, you're married five years. Now, your marriage is five years. You know, and the very year you got married, sorry, your marriage is five years. If, the, if, if you are still on the same level, I'm talking about ment mental level. If you're still on the same level, your husband met you, or your wife met you five years ago, it means that you are gradually losing your attraction. True. Because growth in itself is very attractive. True. You, you, you need to intentionally learn to upgrade yourself. Mm. You kind of, I'm not, I'm not um, justifying unfaithfulness of people who cheat. You kind of wonder why um, some men go out, you know, or some ladies go out, and then they meet maybe secretary or their colleague, and they're having conversation, the striking conversation with those people. And then they're like, man, this person's stank of wisdom is high. Or this person's wisdom well is really high. This person has strikes very intellectual conversation. You know, the tendency, the probability for the person, the, the, the tendency for your spouse to come back home and not want to strike conversation with you is there. Mm, the person true. will begin to feel like, what do I want to discuss with my wife, really? Mm. What do I want to discuss she's with always my watching husband? Telemundo. Because the person is always watching Telemundo. Mm. You're always watching some very funny things mm. that don't make you... African magic, Yoruba. Yeah, that don't, that, don't, that don't make you upgrade yourself. Mm. You know, because if you, if you look at it, um, if you have to use your WhatsApp, use your Facebook in the same model, like you don't keep on updating, you're going to lose, lose out of the old, the new um, stuff that the app may actually have, may have true. created. You know, so that's the same thing with humans. If you got married or if you are in a relationship and the person got attracted to you probably by how you look or even your intelligence and you're not doing anything consciously to develop yourself, your attraction will be lost. Yeah. Before you know it, you begin to, you will begin to lose your attraction for yourself first before your spouse or your fiancé begins to lose attraction for you. Mm. That's the truth. You don't want a situation where you get married. Your, you and your husband, you post level, your, your gap of wisdom, or the, the, the gap between your spouse, your, your, the husband and wife, it's very far apart. It means that companionship cannot be effective. Yeah. Because it's actually communication that brings companionship. So when you're not upgrading mentally, when you're not upgrading intellectually, there's really nothing to converse. There's really nothing to communicate about. You can just communicate about, ah, food day, okay, food not day. Oh, okay. That's why you see some relationships are very dry. You call the person, have you done bath? Have you bathed? <laughs> have you, you are awake? The person mm. is talking to you. I say, oh, you, you are, you, mm. oh, were you sleeping? Oh, mm. why are you sleeping? Mm. You know, there is nothing to really talk about. Because why? Both of you are not on the same level of intellectual compatibility. Both of you are not on the same level of um, your mental faculty. So before you know it, the conversation is no longer there. You see, I, I, I remember um, during my counseling, day, um, one of my counseling days, um, a man came to meet me in the office. And then it was like he doesn't know, but he just sees the union as very weary, he's tired of his marriage and all of that. And I listened to him. I didn't go with, what? I bind the devil. No. I'm like, okay, what's going on? How did you, was it always like, and this is two years of marriage. I'm like, what happened? Why is it like this and all of that? And then first thing is like, the wife is not even willing to always learn. She doesn't, want, she doesn't even know anything new. And I, th I said, okay, you know what? I can't have this counseling with just you. I need you to bring your wife so that I can actually hear from both ends. And she's like, hey, my husband is talking. He's, he's a, the, the, what he says is really fast. She can't really comprehend it. Yes, their marriage is like that. Yeah. The man is growing far ahead. He's leaving the wife behind. True. And sometimes the man doesn't intentionally want to leave the wife behind, but the wife is just not ready to, to learn move. as the husband is moving. Yeah. When I got married to my husband, it was my case. So it's not like I'm just talking. When we just got married, I just felt like, okay, there are, there are some kind of ministers I should listen to. There are some I should not. And my husband is like, if you want to grow in ministry, you have to be vast. Mm. So every time we have conversations,
convictions about ministry, he's very far ahead. So what I had to start doing was I had to accept my weakness. And then if I needed to grow and sustain the kind of members we're having and be able to strike conversations with those people, I now began to peep on the materials my husband was reading. So we had an app. We have an app in our tab. And every time I go to see the, 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 the books he has downloaded, I'll go and read it twice. In fact, he'll be so amazed that I finished it, he's still reading half mm. the page. Why? Because I did not want to lose the attraction I have for myself mm. as well as the attraction people have for me. True. As well as the attraction my spouse has for me. I want a situation when he's striking conversation with me, it's only with ministry that we do, I'm able to dish out something that is wise. Yeah. Content is sexy. Mm. Mm, you can true. put all your shape together. You can have, wear the nice clothes. Mm. But if you don't strike intellectual conversation with your spouse, if you don't strike intellectual conversation with the person that you are in a relationship with, your attraction will be lost. True. As bitter as this may sound, that's the truth. It got to a point in my marriage, my husband would, he would come back, we'll just, you know, he comes back home, I'll just, we don't, we're not conversing. Yeah. And I'll be like, he'll hold his phone, he just press, you know, I'm like, okay, bring food, eat. Sometimes have sex, sometimes don't have sex. And we sleep. And I'm like, what's going on here? And so by the time we began to converse, realized that there was really nothing much that I had to offer from my brain. So it means that I needed to wake up mm. to grow. Was I growing in other areas? Yes, but you see, the very things that are called that connect you and your spouse, you must be on mm. the same page. That's true. So, if, for example, you're just having nice taste of food, both of you have the same taste board. Mm. Okay, I can also get it from a restaurant. Mm. And all of others. But what about some other things that makes companionship very effective that I need to come together and it's core for both of us? So, if both of you are into ministry or both of you have businesses you're running, even if your spouse, your wife or your husband may not have all of the knowledge, but there is something about, you know, you contributing, saying something, oh, wow, oh, you're into catering. Oh, I think you should try this. I think what even made me even get married to my husband, actually, one of the things, you know, it wasn't really my spec. We've said it a number of times, anyways. But in a relationship then... <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Then I served in a ministry outside my church. It was an interdenominational ministry because I actually already had an idea that I was going to go into ministry. I had dreams and all of that, blah, blah, blah. You know? So every time they, I have an invite back then that I, I was to minister in a youth program, most of them say, oh, wow. He would, he, would, he would send me links. He would say, go and read this. Go and do this. Go and do that. So I'm able to come back to him. Your spouse needs something you that the person can come back to. Because I can contribute contributes. Yes. It's not it just, only kissing you should be contributing. Have sense. Mm, it's important. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's just the thing. That's how it works. So if the only thing you're just contributing is, you know, sex, like I said, food, and then, oh, have you taken your bath? What roll-on did you use? What roll-on did you not use? And all those kind of stuff. There is really no extra with you, you know? It makes the relationship boring. You see couples say, ah, they are bored. You know why? They don't have friendly conversation. There's really nothing to talk about. That's really. true. You know. So how do you build your self-confidence? I think we'll go round up with this. Our time is up. How do you now build yourself? How do, how do you improve, improve on yourself? Yeah. You know, overcome your fears. Confront your fears. Confront your fears. So the reason why a lot of us are usually running is because we don't want to confront that which we are scared of. You see people having intelligent conversations in your office and all those stuff. Maybe they are speaking for near grammar, all those stuff. And when you are with it, they are, they are talking intelligence, so you'll be smiling. <laughs> they say, ah, oh, brother John, contribute. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> hey, hey, you can't contribute. Low self-esteem is killing you. And because of that, you start avoiding your friends. Yeah. You don't want to be in a, a gathering where they are having intelligent conversations with people. You start shielding yourself. You will not improve hiding yourself. You need to go out. Sure. You need to go out. Dead those things. Dead those relationships. Build networks around yourself. Have intelligent mentors. Men that can challenge you. Yeah. Be around circles of friends that can challenge you. True. They are doing what you are doing and they are doing great things. Just have communications with them and all those stuff. Yeah. You can just keep improving yourself and you keep growing. Mm. 
It's very important. True. So, why, was, okay. yeah, so why are the smartest in that circle? Look for people who are smarter than you. Yes, it's yes, yes. Yeah. So it, it, it's very important. So try something new. Try new, new relationships, not uh, going for uh, uh, marriage relationship. I mean, friendships, you know, you know, you know a, a lot of us would like to be alone where we are, you know, in our mediocrity. You can just improve by uh, getting friends, you know, visit some core areas within your city, you know, where they eat intelligently. It's not every time mama put it's my style, it's my style. You know, just just go out, go, go to a place where they eat, use a fork and knife, uh, yeah, cutlery true. to eat, you know. <laughs> just just try, try new things, okay? Yeah. It's very important, you know. Before I entered plane, I had to go and join protocol department in church. You know, I said I can be a Scottish guest to the airport. So that I will know, so that I will not fool myself. Amen. True. I was serving there. Not that you can't be hiding in church. Uh, where do you have to serve? Uh, God bless you. No, 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 no. I was everywhere. I would take guests to the host, um, hotel. I will, I will see how they pay and all those stuff. I enter their room. Sometimes I'll sit on the bed. I say, hey! One day I'll be sitting on this kind of bed. Sure. Amen. Take those opportunities and those chances to improve yourself. It's very important. Yeah. Don't hide yourself. True. Because God is taking you global. You don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to stand before kings and not men, men. That's what scripture said. So start preparing for that day. It's coming. So I just remember one funny experience I had. So years ago when I was single, one guy took me out. So I took chicken, I was cracking. He said, ah, but they just dropped fork and knife. Use the fork and knife. I'm like, hey, I just like to crack my <laughs> I honestly didn't know how to use fork and knife. Seriously. So you can just be praying like, man, I want to be a queen. I want to marry a king. And they take you out, you know, and they put fork and knife in front of you. You don't know how to use it. You're like, how do I manage this? Where should I? Is it left? Is it right? <laughs> so, so you not be so hungry. You'll be like, ah, I don't think I have appetite. Then it's like, eat. And I say, I don't feel like it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you want to embarrass royalty. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, stop taking cellophane to weddings. Amen. Sisters, sisters, you are here. We know you. We know you. We see videos online where they video you people. I, I don't want to point out here. Amen. You take selfie to weddings. Amen. They are serving you. Are, have you eaten? You say no. And yet, three plates has entered your selfie. Amen. Please stop it. Tell your neighbor, stop it. <laughs> you know, so it's good. You start improving yourself. You know, some of you say, I like, I like cellophane, cellophane rice. I like to suck it. Please, 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 please. You are going far. I'm telling you. We just came to tell you that you are going far. Amen. So it's very important. You know, for me, I wasn't good with my English when I got married to my wife. My wife bought me brighter grammar. Yeah. No, it's true. I have to. I'm going far now. Will I not learn? Amen. When I'm preaching, she'll carry by her paper. She'll be jotting. I say, hey, God, I don't preach Rema today. She'll be jotting, jotting. I say, Kai, my word, they enter. I just got to meet after I say, babe, how far? How was the word? He said, babe, baby, sit down. Now your mistake are the right things. <laughs> I say, babe, how come my mistake, fu 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 scar, baby? He said, babe, 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 sweet, 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 you are embarrassing. No. How can his be worse? How can worse be where? Ah, ah, babe, I'll fire you now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to humble myself to what? Learn! I did not say I'm the man of the house. Some of you, you can't grow because you are not teachable. Nobody can talk to you. True. I will talk you to somebody. Then you left relationship, the get spoke to me the way I don't like. Who are you? Who are you? Amen. You cannot be having pride in your ignorance. Sit down and what? Learn. Be what? Teachable. People should be able to talk to you. They should be able to tell you. Tell you how you dress. I dress color color riot. My wife started talking to me. Yes, yeah, so. Amen. If you come to my room those days as a single person, I put my boxers here, my stock is there. My my wife came and arranged my life. I didn't fight her. I needed to what? Learn. It's very important. So you what? Be teachable. Then read books. Read books. Watch intelligent movies. Hallelujah, there are movies that are not intelligent. They will keep reducing your, your brain, your mentality. Hallelujah. Amen. So I started learning, I started learning because I knew the kind of woman I was going to get married to, you know, who likes to speak for me. I started watching Western movies so that I can cope with her. I'm an Edo man. 
Hallelujah. I needed to learn certain things, you know. So I needed to expose myself. I needed to take out outside the country as well. To, I don't want to go and mess her up abroad. So I needed to learn. So it's important that you, 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 you work on that. Amen. And finally, get a mentor. Get a mentor. So let's read the scripture. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord God said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height, or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The best form of improvement is the improvement of your heart. I'm telling you, man may, man, I, I know some of you say, oh, this is what I'm talking about, where will I ever get there? Where will I get the best clothes to wear? Where will I get the best shoes to wear? Where can I start packing? That's not what I'm teaching you. I'm only trying to tell you that even, in, even when you are limited physically, if you improve your heart and your relationship with God, you become admirable. It's very important. So build your relationship with God. There's that, there's that, that's the only place God sees. Mm. And that is the art he sees that he recommends the best for you. Mm. So, I didn't have everything to marry this beautiful woman other than the fact that I built my heart and my relationship with God. And God knows my heart. God knows that if I go based on my packaging, I will not win this woman. True. Mm. But God sees my heart and my relationship yeah. with him. And he said, son, you have tried. True. I want to reward you. You need the reward of God? Build your heart. True. I know some of you, you are pumping money, you, I need, you need perfume. You need, uh, which we all talked about, which is good. Yeah. It is man that looks at that. So man, we keep looking at that and they'll keep messing you up. But you need constant love. Build your heart because that is where God looks at. True. Thank you so much. God bless you. Praise God.